Hey, it's Rob here with Signway Specialties, and today we're going over time delay. This is something that's used in audio all the time. All the time. And one of the setups I got right here is kind of like the back end of a car. Got right, or rear left, rear right, front right, front left speaker. Four feet away to the back speaker, two and a half feet to the center of the front seats. And one of the things we're going to figure out is if these two speakers here are playing a 40 hertz test tone, do they sound distorted at this point? Pretty much saying, are they in phase where they meet? Or that's the common term for it. In phase doesn't exactly mean, you know, that they're actually sounding good. In phase is just a common term that they use to generalize whether or not it sounds distorted, which in this case will be considered constructive or destructive interference. The more destructive it is, the less bass you tend to hear when it's set, when the system's not set up right. So, but first, before we get started, there's a few key factors that we have to know. We have to know the temperature in the room. We have to know the frequency of the sound. And we need to know the distances to the point of interest. And the other one is the speed of sound. That is relying on the temperature. So first off, it's 20 degrees Celsius. 20 degrees Celsius needs to be converted to Kelvin, not Fahrenheit, not Celsius. In order to do that, you simply add 273 to whatever the Celsius is. So in this case, it's 293. And to find out what the speed of sound is, we put that over the temp at zero. So 273 is what it will always be and then the speed of sound at zero, which is 331 meters per second. And when you get done doing this math, you will have the speed of sound at a given temperature. Three forty two point nine. Now, the frequency, that one's given in Hertz. What that means is every time the speaker sends out a signal, it's going to be 40 times per second that it does this. So it'll go all the way out and all the way back in and back to center 40 times every second at 40 hertz. The next one that we have to get is the radius of each one of these and that needs to be in meters. This is not done in feet, yards, inches, nautical knots or anything like that. No weird stuff. So 2.5 feet equals 0 0.76 meters and to get this value right here if all you know is the distance to the back speaker and the distance to the center you need to do Pythagorean theorem which is going to be 2.5 squared plus 4 squared that's going to be 4.717 which is known as 1.5 I think it's four meters. So now that we got those two radiuses, which is how far the distance from that center point is. So from B, the back left, we have 1.4 meters. And from A, the front left, we have 0 0.76 meters. Now the next thing we need to get is we need to get the wavelength. Wavelength is described as velocity over frequency which comes out to be wavelength equals 342.9 over 40 and that value that you get right there is going to be in meters it's not going to be anything else it's just going to be in meters and that is going to be whoop, not that one 8.5 7. Now what is that value? 8.57 means that every time this thing makes one wave on the graph, which means speaker's coming out, speaker's getting sucked in, from the time that it initially starts to move the cone to the time that it stops in one pulse, the sound has traveled 8.57 meters. That's how you know what the wavelength is. All 
All right, now that we got that, we need to figure out if it's actually distorted. And this is an absolute value bars. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the radius of one speaker times the speed of sound, or sorry, times the wavelength, and then the radius of another speaker times the wavelength. And you're going to subtract them. It doesn't matter if you do R, A, and frequent. It doesn't matter if you do RA first or RB first. Either way, it's just looking for a gap between the two. So we'll do 0 0.76 times 8.57 minus 1.4 times, oh, getting all weird here, 8.57 in absolute bars. We get our calculator, and what we end up getting here is 5.484. Now, what does that number mean? How do we tell if it's distorted? To the listener, speakers aren't bad, amplifier is not bad, source isn't bad. The fact that this is not a whole number, the decimal value after, which is 0.484, tells us from 0 to 1 pi, which is one full phase change, which is going to be 180 degrees if it's a 1.0, is that this thing is half a wavelength behind. So. With that 4.84, if you had a value of 5.0, you'd be perfectly fine. You'd have all the bass you could possibly get if it's 5.00000. Anything in here means there will be a somewhat distorted value. To get it perfect like this, you can't. Because of the problem with thermal conductivity, there's thermal expansion. There's another video I did on that which also happens to the copper windings and the toroidal transformers, the step-up transformers, the MOSFETs, all the capacitive discharge in your amplifier or source, all changes as it heats up. So the higher power you go, the more room for error there is. But what this can do is this can essentially get you close to the value you're looking for. Have you ever seen the knob on your amp that's on there and it says zero? 180, but you never ever use it. That is not there if it sounds bad, so you can sit there and switch the polarity. If you want to switch polarity, you switch the wires. If you switch this, what you're doing is delaying a certain amount. So if you turn this halfway, you would essentially fix this problem because this is half off. The nice thing about this value right here is the decimal number right here tells you how far off you are. So just slightly below 0.48, not 0.5, just slightly below half, which will probably be right around here, is where you would move that, that phase angle knob. What that phase angle does is it shifts the sound wave forward or backwards. Now what you would do is you would shift, or this would, this would shift it backwards, this would delay it. <clears throat> Now what you would do is you would do that to the front left speaker. You would not do that to the rear. Why? Because the rear left, if you delay this one, it makes it even worse. The number will go up. If you delay this one, this one will wait until the sound starts to travel. And what you can do is try to figure out if you can actually get this to fire or the front left of fire after B has made it sound way long enough to reach two and a half meters away. So this would fire, it's going, it's going and going, then this one would go and they'd meet in the middle. And that's how you figure those things out. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Pretty quick tip and trick. And this works in all audio systems. Rob, Sideway Specialties, have a good day.